All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Camping 101 channel. So um, this one's gonna be a bit of a geeky one, so grab your calculators if you need it, um, because I'll just be talking a little bit about what I actually believe is underneath my car in terms of the kilowatt hours in the battery and at least what's usable. But first, as I normally would tell you, you know, I've got some other information around what I do to give you as well. So welcome back. Let's dive in and see what we've got. Now, I want to start off, first of all, by telling you, well, I travel a lot, um, as you know, and I tend to do a little bit of filming every time I travel because I like keeping up to date with what's happening with the car. One of the places that I go as often as I possibly can is to visit my mother-in-law. Now, my mother-in-law lives in, um, in the borough of Brent in uh, northwest London, and one of the lovely things that that, um, that borough is doing is that they're making it easy for people to buy and own electric cars. Now, a lot of the houses in that area, they don't really have garages. So people are parking on the street and paying, you know, to park on the street. But what they've started doing is they started putting, well, not started, they have put um, charge points into the lampposts on some of the streets. So when I go to visit my mother-in-law, I just pull up over there, plug in, bosh, and away we go. So now I want to just show you a little bit about my charging habits and what it's been like over at least just this last month. I've owned the car for about four months now, but just this month of October, I want to talk to you a little bit about what I've been noticing. So first of all, as I've said in one of my other videos, it's actually cheaper for me to charge at the Ionity fast chargers. Thank you, BMW, for making that available for new i4 owners, or I think even iX owners, where despite the um, energy crisis that we have, you still only pay 26p per kilowatt hour to use the Ionity fast chargers. I've got one about four miles away from my house, so I tend to use that more often than not to charge my car, charge up to 80%, and then I run through the rest of the week perfectly fine without any issues. When I go to visit my mother-in-law, I will use those AC chargers that they've got on the street side. They offer about five kilowatts. So we'll talk a little bit about what I use in the month of October so far. So during this month of October, I have used 160 kilowatts from the Ionity charger not too far from my house. So charging that at around 26p means that next month when the invoice comes in, I would expect to be paying around the 41 pound mark um, to pay for all those charging. What's really weird about the AC chargers though, particularly the one on the street that I'm talking about, when I try to use the Bonnet app, um, charging on, on that particular charger on those streets near my mother-in-law's, it, it's around 50p per kilowatt hour. You know, still not as expensive as some other people are charging. Some of them are 66, 69p, somewhere around there. If I use my BMW charging app, it's 45p. But if I go onto Chargy's website itself, it's 42p. So that's what I've used. I've used the 42p and a charge. And when I was there this last week, I charged 63 and a half kilowatts there. And that at 42p is about 26, 27 pounds, somewhere around there. So all in all, so far this month, I have spent around um, 68 pounds, 27 p so around 68 pounds is what I've spent, you know, just charging up my car using the Ionity charger and that one time at the AC charger near my mother-in-law. Now, with the energy crisis and where we're at right now, if I was to charge at home and charge that same amount, 223 kilowatts, it would have cost me 80 pounds 28. So, you know, it's still cheaper for me to charge in the way that I am charging, um, not so good at home. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what's really been happening with uh, my charging. So, 
I've noticed this early in the month, since around 2nd of October, I went over to the Ionity chargers, charged my car, I was on 59% at that point in time. And I charged it to 80% because that's what I tend to do like on the weekends, because I do travel quite a bit on the weekends, almost every single weekend. And um, so I wasn't at too much of a, you know, low state of charge, but I liked starting my weekend around 80%. So I charged up to 80%. Now, that means that that's what 21% um, of the battery that I sort of put in and that 21% worked out to be 19 kilowatts. So I've put 19 kilowatts in the car. Now, if you're a good mathematician and you check, if 21% equates to 90, 19 kilowatt, if I then divide that by that 21%, it should give me what capacity I'm at at a full state of charge. And that capacity turned out to be 90.5 kilowatts. Now, hang on a minute. When I bought this car, I was told manufacturer said that it's around 83 and a half kilowatts, somewhere around there, with 80 kilowatts usable. But that's weird, right? So it's telling me that I've actually got more battery than I've been told I've got. I'm not complaining. That's a good thing. You know, I actually quite like that. But I thought, let me check that again. So this week on Monday, I'm talking about uh, four days ago, when I went to those AC chargers, plugged my car in, I was on 29%. And I plugged the car in, 29%, it means I need 71%. This time I charged it to 100. So I charged up 71% of the battery, and I'm talking in percentages here. And when I got the text message to tell me my car was finished charging, it was 63 and a half kilowatts taken. So I thought, let me just check that again. So 63 and a half kilowatts represents 71%. So I sort of divided that. This time it's come out at 89.4 kilowatts. It's so still breaching on that 90, um, 90 kilowatts. Now, I must admit here, you know, well, everybody who's, you know, looking at this, even though the car says it's on 29%, I don't know what stage in the 29%. It could be 29.9% or it could be 29.1%. I don't know. Um, and you won't know that, you know, from the, the computer systems that you've got. But checking it just as bare 71% um, bare charge to get it to 100% tells me that I'm coming up for around 90 kilowatts. Could it possibly be that it's 90 kilowatts underneath there? I don't know. Or do I? Because now I'm going to talk to you about some other bits of maths that I've been doing to show that this might well be the case. And this comes from the efficiency of the car. Now, from the efficiency of the car, now I've been doing all sorts of mixed driving. Most of my driving is motorway, so I'm driving at 70 miles an hour. Most of the times I have my whole family in the car and so on. So I am on the motorway quite a lot, especially on the weekends. During the week, I'm doing a school run, a round trip of around 20 miles or so during the week. So I'm sort of getting that done, churning through that every day. Now, the car is telling me that its efficiency is around 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. Now, if it's around 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour with 80 kilowatts usable, I should be getting around 312 miles out of the car. If I think I've got 90 kilowatts in there, then I should be getting 351 miles. But I've never seen that. So I know that what the car is telling me is not necessarily true, but I'm doing sort of mixed driving anyway. So I tend to use more percentage because that seemed to be a bit more reliable to me. Now, what I've been seeing, even over the summer when I was pulling a trailer to go camping and now as we're in autumn, well, we have a particularly mild autumn at the minute. Our temperatures daily is around 18 to 20 degrees. So um, it's not really much to go on. And I suspect that might change as we get into the colder months. However, after owning the car for the last four months, what I've actually noticed is that the most reliable way to find out how my usage is going to be is to use percentage rather than miles per kilowatt hour. 
So regardless of if I'm pulling a trailer or the, well, we haven't really had any cold weather at the minute, but what I've noticed is that for every 30 miles, the car will use about 10% of the battery. So regardless of what kilowatt hours I'm sitting on in the floor, I am reliably getting around 300 miles per full charge from the car. Obviously, I don't run it down to zero because um, that's not something I do. It's because I've never run it so low that I went into the reserve. So I don't think that's what I've got. And I don't think the car is reporting reserves when it's telling me what percentage is in the battery. Um, because I've seen many videos now where people have run it down to zero and even at zero, they're still driving for like 15 miles or, you know, before the car finally goes into turtle mode and die. So I know that the percentage isn't reporting reserve um, charge. Um, so, and the final thing I'm going to tell you, what I believe is the actual true efficiency from my BMW i4. It's still not bad. But this is what I think is the true efficiency. So now that I've captured all this data, and I love the BMW app for that because it gives me all this data. Now that I've captured all this data, I can actually do some proper analysis on it. So at the beginning of the month, on the 1st of October, when I went to that Ionity charger and I charged up there for the first time, my mileage was on 4,613 is what I was sitting on, okay? When I charged up again, um, this is on Monday this week, 24th of October, my mileage was on 5,400. So that tells me that over the month from the 1st of October to the 24th of October, bearing in mind, even as I make this video, I am not at home. I am visiting my father-in-law with the family. So I'm still 80 odd miles away from home, so still gotta get back home and all that. But anyway, that's, but that's besides the point. Let's get back to the point. So it tells me that so far up until Monday this week, I have traveled in the car 787 miles, which is about right because I usually travel around a thousand miles a month in that car. So 787 miles. Now take that 787, and divide it by the 263 kilowatts that I've actually used, it tells me that my actual efficiency is at 2.99 miles per kilowatt hour. Let's round it up and say three miles per kilowatt hour. That's what I'm actually getting. Now let's take that three miles per kilowatt hour and times it by what I think is actually underneath that car, 90 kilowatts usable. When I times that by 90, that comes out to 269. Let's round that up to 270 miles. I should be able to charge. Huh? You see what I'm talking about? Now, based on those three bits of information I've shown you, I think it's a strong possibility that I've actually got 90 kilowatts usable under the floor. Now, what's been your experience? You know, let me know in the comments below. Do you drive an i4? Do you drive any other? brand of electric car have you done any maths on it and have you noticed at all any discrepancy with what you're being told in the dashboard from what your actual mathematics have told you if so plunk it in the comments down below i will be more than happy to read it anyway disclaimer at the end now i'm putting the disclaimer at the end these are the experiences that i have with my bmw i4 now it might not be the same for you and also, I do, um, I do a lot of mixed driving. I live in the country, as you can see from my last video. Um, lots of winding roads, up and down, rolling hills and so on, just for me to get home, okay? And all of that's going to affect, you know, the usage. I drive a lot of motorway miles. Maybe if I just stuck to town driving, I might get more efficiency and more mileage out of the car. So that's my disclaimer. You might not have the same experience, but if you do, I'd love to hear about it. This is the new way to charge. Yeah, well, I've seen that was in the ground for years. There's and there's here. another one here. Yeah, yeah. See the green lights on? So you just pull that up. I presume that that's what you do. Pull it out, pay for it, maybe, maybe do something, and you can charge your car. That's absolutely amazing. Look at that. Anyway, guys, that brings us to the end of this video. 
I hope that you've enjoyed it. If you did, smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you know when another upload is about to happen. But for now though, until I see you on the next one, peace.